Today we're going to illustrate to you how to construct a regular pentagon. First of all, I start by drawing any circle with a center C and I put in any diameter that goes through the center. I then construct using the constructions we've seen on mathhyter.com a perpendicular bisector of that diameter. Now I did that by putting my compass point at C and moving the pencil out to there and making a mark and then going to the other side and with the same radius I made a mark over here. And then with a compass point here I drew an arc down there and with my compass point there I drew an arc down here. Joining this arc up to C, I get the perpendicular bisector. So that means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. The next thing I do is I go from here to here on the radius and I bisect it. So to do that I use my perpendicular bisector construction again. I put my compass at C and I do an arc below and an arc above and then I go over to here and I do an arc below and an arc above and then I take my ruler and instead of drawing the whole line all the way down from here to here I just draw this part of the line because I'm trying to find the point G. Now my construction is almost done. I go to point G and move my pencil all the way up to point A, right at the top. And I construct this arc that goes from A all the way down and hits a diameter at a point I will call H. Now I go to point A with my compass point and measure how far it is from A to H. And I draw an arc that goes out to the circle and meets at point B. That arc I now am going to recreate five times around the circle. That's the length of each side. So I go to point B and I make a, an arc down here at a point I'll call D and then I go to D and I make an arc over here at a point I call E and I go to E and I make an arc up here at a point I'll call F. So this is E, F, sorry this is D, this is E and this is F. Finally, to test it, put your compass point at F and see if you can get it to reach all the way up to A. So I'm almost right on up there. Almost right on, perfect to A. Now I can make my, my pentagon. I'm going to go to A and draw a line from A to B. And then carry this on around. Go from B to D. I actually used this construction when designing my house. I needed a decagon as a basement, so I used a giant uh, compass made out of a rope with a, a loop and a stick in the loop, constructed the pentagon, and then I divided each side of the pentagon and bisected the angles and formed a decagon, and that's how I started by designing my basement, which had to be a decagon. Okay, this didn't come in very dark. There is my perfect pentagon. Now to see why it works, you can go to my website, which is www.mathhiker.com And you can do a search and uh, on Pentagon 
or go to uh, July twelfth, uh, two thousand and nine, and you will see why that there will be a description there of why it works. But what I'm going to zero in on here is another interesting thing about a pentagon. What is the relationship between this distance from B to F to the length of any side? Do, 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 do. So, what I'm going to look at is this part of the pentagon and just the length from B to F compared to A to B. First of all, we have a formula here that the sum of all sides is 180 degrees times the number of sides of a polygon subtract 2. So my number is 5 sides to a pentagon. I subtract 2. That gives me 3. If I do 3 times 180, the sum of all of the angles is 540. So if I divide that by 5, I get that this angle is 108 degrees up there. So, I can now use the law of the cosines. Just zeroing in on this triangle, I have AF and AB are the same side. And the law of the cosines says that BF squared equals AB squared plus AF squared minus 2 times AB and AF, the same two sides, times a cosine of 108. But since A, B, and A, F are equal, I can substitute that in. So instead of A, F, I'm going to write A, B into those two spots. And I'll make this equal sign look a bit better. So B, F squared now equals those two things, minus two times the same things, cos 108. Well, A, B squared and A, B squared, if I add them up, I get two A, B squared. And 2 times AB times AB also gives me 2 AB squared. So factoring out 2 AB squared and 2 AB squared, factoring that out, I get this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this side by AB squared and this side by AB squared. That will cancel that. And that gives me the ratio squared is equal to, I make this equal bigger and this equal bigger, that number which works out to that. Hmm, this decimal part here looks really familiar. There's something about it. Well, we still need to get the ratio. So now I'm going to take the square root of this side and the square root of this number. Aha! I have seen that number before. That's the golden ratio, which we call phi. And this decimal part and that decimal part are exactly the same. So, the relationship between going across a pentagon compared to the sides, if this was 1 and this was 1, this would be the golden ratio, 1.618. And it has a really neat little thing that if I square the golden ratio, I end up getting the same thing as the golden ratio with 1 added to it. And in fact, if you have been following my series on Math Hiker I, and the golden ratio, if I take this across, you'll find out that any equation that looks like this, when you solve it using the quadratic formula, you end up with the golden ratio. So in fact, the golden ratio is the only number that has that sort of property. So, 
I urge you to go to www.mathhiker.com and look at the series I have on the golden ratio because it's all wrapped up with the Pentagon which is why maybe um, the Pythagoreans uh, use the Pentagon as part of their uh, symbols.